Uh, speed running. It's that thing that your one friend says they can do but actually can't. The other day I was sitting down and I was like, hey, I play Elden Ring. I've done some challenge runs before. How hard could speedrunning possibly be? I'm also adding in a 45 minute time limit to me learning the route because the only thing more constant in life than Patrick Bateman memes is that challenge videos do well on YouTube. But before we pretend that I have any idea how to use the live split speedrun timer, I want you to pretend that you are subscribed to the channel. Imagine how that would feel, knowing that you would never have to miss another one of my uploads again. The power of an epic wombat in the palm of your hand. Okay, now I want you to make that dream a reality. All done? Good. Now back to the video. The first thing I do after starting the timer is write down the things I know about the route and the things that I don't know. I want to take a second here to mention that I'm doing an any% glitchless speedrun, as I really don't want to spend my entire time limit trying to learn how to zip. As a veteran challenge runner, I do know the basic route. Get eaten by the god of Pastafarianism to teleport to the Volcano Manor, sleep and kill the noble, grab the Richard Killer and upgrade it to plus 6, and beat the game from there. This was about the end of my knowledge though, so I turned to the internet for help. After watching the first part of an actual speedrun at 2 times speed, I was able to get more of the specifics, like how I needed to grab the Golden Valley incantation from Stormhill, and how to get the St. Trina's Lilies. I knew the main roadblock for this run would be the Noble, as there's kind of a lot of him. Bro makes prayer a contact sport. You only have a limited amount of sleep pots that you can collect in a timely manner, so I spent a while learning exactly how what you had to do to defeat him. I also decided that it would be worth getting the Somber Stones from Kylid in order to get my Richard Killer to plus 9, because I was pretty sure that I wouldn't be able to beat the game with just a plus 6 one. A better player can, but does this really look like the channel of a good player? And yes, you can get a somber weapon up to plus 9 by only having to kill the Godskin Noble. After figuring out the Noble, I didn't have much time left, so all I managed to do was learn the Draconic Tree Sentinel and balance duo fights. At that point, my 45 minutes was almost up, so I finished up a few notes I still had to take, and that was it. All the route learning I could do in 45 minutes. I thought it was pretty good at the time, and my initial goal was to get an optimistic sub-230 run. Spoiler alert, I was not able to get a sub-230 run. I actually ended up attempting this run three times. On the first try, I died so many times to the Godskin Noble that it wasn't worth continuing the run. I also lost all the footage from that attempt, so uh... The basics of the speedrun are simple. We begin as a samurai with some fat stacks, and after jumping off a cliff, we end up in a cave. Sadly, the pizza rolls aren't ready yet, so I do something no gamer has ever done before and go outside. What's this soft green carpet I'm standing on? We make our way to a church and meet one of the three people in this run who we do not murder on sight. Luckily, the killings begin soon after, as grabbing our horse makes it easy to get to the knight holding the Golden Vale Ash of War, which makes us do slightly more damage. Definitely worth ending an innocent life over. And the slaughter of innocents doesn't stop here, as after getting some sights of Grace and Lyurnia, we go to Kylo and kill a Scarab to get a Somberstone 8, and a knight is just laying out a body right next to it. Back to Liberia we go, and after meeting Springtrap, we get teleported to Hell, aka Wyoming. It is here that we will find more upgrade materials, as well as the terrifying boss known only as your mom. At this point, I have made the grave error of only having 8 sleep pots on me. Let's see how that went for me. I guess I gotta go on a bit of a detour to get some more. At least now I have an understanding of what I need to do to beat this boss. This is when I realized a couple things. 1. How is it so hard to kill a boss that's probably going to die next week of obesity anyway? And 2. I'm not good enough to be fighting like this. Yeah sure, if I was someone who was good at the game, I could learn the strats and win the fight. But you and I both know this isn't that type of channel, so I folded and grabbed the smithing stone bell bearings to upgrade my Uchi Katana to plus 12. After returning to the manor, I beat him second try. At this point though, I was already over 2 hours in, so I decided to wait until the next day and try a third attempt. This run begins exactly the same way as the previous one did, with the only difference being that I grab both the smithing stone bells early and upgrade my Uchi Katana. This probably saved my sanity, as it took only a couple of attempts to put the noble six feet under. I guess preying on my downfall didn't work out too well for him in the end. Finally, on my third attempt, I had actually made it to the weapon I'm going to use for the rest of the run. Now all I have to do is a boss rush. It couldn't be that bad, right? At least Margaret isn't, and I think I hit a new speed TV on Godric. Later. 
I also went for Renal instead of Rikard because although Richard is the faster fight, I'm trying to finish this video sometime before the heat death of the universe. Also, I want to point out that half these times are wrong because I'm really bad at remembering to hit the split key. It's fine though. Gilika had to die for me to get the Ritual Store Talisman, and then it was on to my nemesis, the Tree Sentinel. I mean, I mean the Tree Sentinel. I mean, this is actually the first run I've done where the Draconic Tree Sentinel was an easy boss, although that's mostly because I have an overpowered weapon at this point. Now that's a lot of damage. Defeating him gives us access to Landell, which is a huge area. Luckily, we can just skip it by going down here and. Oh, right. Of course. Since we can't do the gamer skip, we are forced to go through high school band practice. Spoiler alert, they're not very good. I also make a quick detour and grab Margaret's Shackle from Patches. Up next is Godfrey's Shade, which is a pushover as usual. It's always a nice palette cleanser before what lies ahead. Speaking of pushovers, Margaret. Turns out being able to lock your opponent to the ground for like 10 seconds is pretty good. Honestly, I don't know why I don't get the Shackle every run. It makes things 20 times easier for like 5 minutes of work. Wait, what, what, what's the sound? It, it sounds like... Everyone's favorite part of an Elden Ring speedrun! Running! Woo! Luckily, a local is nearby to help put me out of my misery. I needed a few more tries to beat them, but in the end it wasn't even close. Once that's done, we can commit some arson and wake up in the sky, because uh, that's how sleep works, I guess, I don't know. We also can't use our horsewind in the sky, so we're forced to walk all the way to the most fun boss fight in the game. I say boss fight sarcastically because it's closer to trying to break bedrock with your fist in Minecraft. In this challenge though, it's not that bad, since I don't actually have to play the game. With Dua Lipa down, we can finally meet the edgelord himself, Malaketh, the Black Blade. Malaketh though is, uh, kinda hard. Again, because I want to finish this video before the heat death of the universe, I go and grab the flame of the Red Mane's Ash of War. Malaketh only takes two hits before he staggers, so it's possible to stagger loop him with enough FP. Boom. There we are. Arson has been successfully committed. Just the final stretch left now, and Kidian is barely even a part of it. He kinda just gets hit and dies. Godfrey, on the other hand, does not die easily. You've heard of soul-crushing defeat? Get ready for skull-crushing defeat. Godfrey is a trolley coming directly at me, and the track controller is a Tesla's AI. I'm not gonna lie, I had stuff to do that night, so I had to stop and finish the run in the morning. But you and I both know you weren't paying attention to that speedrun timer anyway. Godfrey did end up taking a while, but just like every other person we've met on this run, he dies all the same. One final boss to go. Just Radagon and his 10 times easier second phase. Good thing I'm an expert at killing God. This shouldn't be bad at all. Yeah, so this was significantly harder than I anticipated. Radagon just kinda has a large amount of health. Even with my high damage output, it wasn't easy, especially when the Elden Beast started attacking with moves I'd never even seen before. But I stuck with it. I persevered. And eventually, I got it. I had beaten Elden Ring, and my in-game time was 7 hours and 17 minutes. To be fair, an hour of that was just me AFK while I was eating dinner, so it was probably closer to like 6 hours, which isn't bad for a first run. It was honestly a cool challenge, and I really enjoyed recording for it. It's something I'd honestly recommend trying. Just spend 45 minutes or so looking over the route, and you should be all set to get your first beginner speedrun in. Just make sure you don't beat my time though. That'd be kinda cringy, I'm not gonna lie.